morning, y'all. Back with some morning wisdom. Morning wisdom where we take a proverb each day and we dive into it a little bit. So today we're in Proverbs 24.10. And this is what Proverbs 24.10 says. It says, if you faint in your day of adversity, your strength is small. If you faint in your day of adversity, your strength is small. So my question to you right now is how do you respond to adversity? When adversity strikes, how do you respond? What's your response? Do you throw a hissy fit and complain? Do you get frustrated and throw your hands up and quit and give up? Do you diligently seek the Lord or do you do you start asking why me oh why me or or seeking the advice and opinions of other people or do you look for the opportunity are you somebody that looks for opportunity in the challenges how do you typically respond for you what is your response see we all display confidence and a good attitude during times of blessings and during the good times right but it's through the trials of life when strength and character is put on display. Our ability or inability to stand under the pressure shows when our strength truly lies under pressure right there. It's an adversity. Crisis does not make a person, but it simply reveals a person to themselves. I want to read you, this is uh, Jeremiah 12. I think this goes perfectly along right here. Uh, Jeremiah 12 Jeremiah, this is what he says. This is one through four. And then God responds in uh, verse five. This is uh, Jeremiah 12. You are always righteous, Lord, when I bring a case before you. Yet I would speak with you about your justice. <laughs> uh, Jeremiah comes to God and says, let me, let me just tell you a little something about your justice. And then he says, why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why? Why do all the faithless live at ease? You have planted them and they have taken root. They grow and bear fruit. You are always on their lips, but you're far from their hearts. Yet you know me, Lord. You know me. You know me. You see me. You test my thoughts about you. Drag them off like sheep to be butchered. <laughs> Set them apart for the day of slaughter. How long would the land lie parched and the grass and every field be withered? Because those who live in it are wicked. The animals and birds have perished. Moreover, the people were saying, he will not see what happens to us. So, you know, this is kind of uh, kind of funny right here. Jeremiah, he's complaining to God about the wicked and how the wicked are actually prospering and the, they're living this life of ease. He says, these people talk about you with their mouths, but their hearts are far from you. And then he basically says, look at me, God. Look at me, Lord. You know me. You know my heart. You know, right? You see me, I know, I, I, and then he says, I mean, how long will you allow this to go on? But I want you to check out what the father says in verse five. Check this out. I love this response, man, this is good. If you, this is God responding back to Jeremiah, if you have raced with men on foot and they've worn you out, how can you compete with horses? If you stumble in a safe country, how will you manage in the thicket? of the Jordan right there. Wow. God is basically asking Jeremiah, if you get so tired in these small challenges, how will you ever be able to face the big ones? Right? When I think about world champion athletes, they put their bodies through this, you know, tremendous discipline and, and tremendous stress in order to compete and win on the world stage. See, our adversity we, our adversity is actually a training ground. Jeremiah, as you, as you listen, you can just feel, right? I mean, you can just feel the frustration in the words on the page as he's frustrated and discouraged. And, and Father God, he just responds with Jerry. Hey, Jerry, all right, check it out. I made you to run with horses. I made you I designed you, I created you to run with horses, but you're getting tired by running with some regular runners right here. I created you to do the hard things, Jeremiah, but you're stumbling in a peaceful setting. Get your focus off the circumstances and look to me. 
I just want to say we were di designed and created to run with the horses. That's not just Jeremiah right there. God has designed us to do big things. And many times we get so caught up in the small things and allow the small things of life to distract us instead of seeing it as a uh, training ground to get us to be the type of warriors and men and women that God has called us to be. So the morning wisdom for today is take notice of how you respond to adversity. What is your initial response typically? And does anything need to change? Hey, last thing real quick, I want to read to you as a last word of encouragement. This is right here in Hebrews 12. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I guess I should have had this pulled up. But Hebrews 12, 11 through 13. Hebrews 12, 11 through 13. Now, all disciplines, all discipline seems to be more pain than pleasure at the time. Yet later, it will produce a transformation of character. Wow. Transformation of character, bringing a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who yield to it. Think about that. Those who yield to it. So be made strong even in your weakness by lifting up your tired hands in prayer and worship and strengthening your weak knees. For as you keep walking forward on God's paths, all your stumbling ways will be divinely healed. Hey. I hope today's added value to you. That's our morning wisdom for today. Look forward to being back with you guys next time. Have a great day and God bless.